So hello my dear students and learners. In the C programming tutorials, in the previous video I have discussed about the basic concepts of programming, then low level and high level languages, then different translators, for example interpreter, compiler, assembler, then I have also discussed about the features of C language and how to write a basic C program with the help of a structure of a C program. Now today I am going to discuss a very important topic that after writing a, your first C programming or any kind of C programming, how to compile and execute the C program. That means what is the compilation and execution process of a C program. Okay, now I am going to describe the entire process with the help of this flowchart. Okay, now first whenever you are writing any kind of C program, then you have to take the help of a C text editor. So it can be notepad also. So in text editor, what you are writing has include stdi.h. So this is the inclusion of the header file. Here the name of the header file is stdi.h. It is in standard input output header file. Okay, now we are defining the main function void main and inside the main function I have just written one line that is hello world and we are calling I am calling the printf function so that's whenever this function gets called it will be executed it will print this line hello world so this is a very simple C programming I have written okay now so this is the source file now whenever you have written the C program then what you have to do you have to save this file first Okay, since it is a C programming, so it has to be saved with the extension .c. So here, this is the C file. You can see that this is the source code and this file is being saved with the .c extension. So suppose the name of the program is program. So we are saving it with the dot extension dot .c. So the name of the file is program.c where our source code has been saved. Now, after saving this C code in the source file, then header files that we have included for example stdi.h for example has include stdio.h another header file for example has include conio.h we have included in the header file so this header file along with the source file now has to be compiled okay now Suppose you have defined a macro like that, has defined, suppose size uh, 10. So this is another macro. Now whatever lines we have mentioned using this hash symbol. So this means these are the preprocessor directives. So preprocessor directives will always start with a hash symbol. Now you look at this, this entire thing is the compilation process. Now. Before compilation in for C programming language, another thing is happened that is called pre-processing. Okay, so who will process it? The pre-processor. So what is a pre-processor? A pre-processor is another program like compiler. So who which will actually process the entire source code and after that it will pass the necessary directives to the compiler. Okay, so what pre-processor will do? So this line actually started with hash symbol. So this line will now be processed by the C processor. Now here we have included these two header file. For example, stdi.h it is in standard input output header file. The another one is conio.h that is console input output header file. So why have we included this two header file? Because we are going to use some standard input output function in our program. So suppose for example the name of the function is scanf. Scanf you know the scanf function is used to scan or read or take any inputs in C programming. Similarly, printf function, printf function is used to print any kind of information on the output screen. So these are the two system defined function. This function has already been defined by the system. Okay, and this function declaration has been included in this header file because it is not the user defined function. This function has already been defined. So their declaration has been included in this header file. Okay, similarly conio.h, suppose you want to call this getch function. So getch function actually holds your output screen. So this function declaration has been mentioned in this header file. So that's why since we are going to use this header file, so in advance we are taking the permission from the compiler from the system that 
by including by including this header file that we are going to call this system defined function okay now what is this this is the macro has defined size 10 what is macro so we'll have a separate video about this macro chapter later on but for the time being you try to understand that in your source program wherever this size the symbolic constant will be found it will just be replaced by the value 10 okay so suppose in um, five places five different places you have used these symbolic constants in your program so in all these five places the size this symbolic constant will be replaced by the value 10 and that will be done by the preprocessor so before compilation before compiler takes its action all these things will happen so actually the code the source code will be expanded that means all the hash symbol will be removed so now the source code that you have saved earlier with the extension dot c with the file name program dot c will now be expanded after preprocessing the entire code so now the another file will be generated that is called extendable source code and it is also termed as intermediate source code so intermediate source code will now be saved with the extension dot i here i stands for intermediate so now we have got another file that is called program dot i after successful preprocessing of the source file program dot c okay now after preprocessing the compiler will compile the program okay so in compilation what will actually happen in compilation it will check this is called decision box so it will check whether there is any syntax error or not okay is there any syntax error syntax error means any kind of typographical error suppose you have missed the semicolon you have missed the double quotation to print any kind of string or if you have declared a variable that has not you, have, you are using a variable that has not been declared okay you are using an array that size has not been mentioned or suppose you have done any kind of a spelling mistake so all this kind of errors will be termed as syntax error and that will be that will be yes shown or reported at the time of compilation so that is the job of the compiler so if there is any syntactical error is there so what we have to do again we have to go to the source code and we have to we have to take necessary steps we have to correct all these things in the source code so that all the syntactical errors gets removed and we can successfully compile it so whenever all the syntactical will, error will get removed that means no syntactical error will be there then this source code this extendable source code actually program.i will now be converted to the assembly code okay so assembly code it is also a low level language okay and it will be saved with the extension dot asm asm stands for assembly code okay now the program.i after successful compilation it will convert it to program.asm and it is an assembly level code it is a low level code okay now since it is an assembly language code so it is not understandable by the machine because you know i have already mentioned in the previous videos that machine only understand zeros and ones so we have to convert this assembly code to the machine code and who will convert it it is the assembler which will convert the assembly level code to its machine codes now you can see now your code the source code has been converted as a sequence of zeros and ones and that is called machine code and this machine code will be saved with the extension dot obj so name of the file is now program.obj and which is an object code okay now this object code has to be transferred through the linker so linker will link the runnable libraries of the c system okay so runnable libraries means in laravel libraries what is there so whatever function system defined function we have used that is can a print a get ch all this function definition has been written in this c libraries okay so this libraries now has to be included along with the object code and when this two will be passed and linked with the linker then the execute executable code that that will be saved with the dot exe extension will be generated so your executable code on code will only be generated when the object code will be passed through the linker and the runnable libraries of the system will be connected to it only then dot exe file that is the executable file will be produced and it will be saved with the dot exe file so now we have got this program dot exe from this program dot c which was our source code now after getting the .exe file, now who will execute this program? The CPU, Central Processing Unit. Now, whenever you are writing the C program, 
you have saved this program in your hard disk and hard disk is a secondary memory so now we have to transfer this uh, <coughs> code .exe file from your hard disk to the main memory main memory means ram so the code the .exe file that is the executable file has to be transferred from the secondary memory that is from your hard disk to the main memory which is ram so who will transfer this the loader now the concept of the loader is come so the loader will load this executable file from the hard disk to the main memory where so the cpu will find this file and can execute it so in the program execution will start then it will search is there any logical error logical error means suppose no syntax error is there the program is running successfully or program is showing not any kind of error but suppose uh, suppose you have declared two variables and assigned these variables for a variable you have assigned value a value 5 and for in variable b you have assigned 10 now you want to perform a plus b so the result must come as 5 plus 10 that is 15 so that must be your result but uncautiously in place of plus what you have mentioned that a minus b so what will happen 5 minus 10 so output that you are receiving is minus 5 although you want to receive the output 15 but since in place of plus you have uncautiously mentioned minus operator subtraction operator you are getting incorrect result so that is called logical error okay so the logical error will not be reported by the compiler it will not be found at the time of compilation okay so if logical error is there that means you are not getting your desired output that means something wrong is there and that is called logical error so if it is there then we have to correct this code from a minus b to a plus b so again we have to go to the source code so again the logic in the logical in the decision box we are checking is there any error logical error if it is yes then we have to again return back to the source code we have again we have to correct it we have to take the necessary action so that all the logical error gets removed and when all the logical errors will get removed no logical error will be there everything is fine then we will get our desired output okay so this is the entire process starting from writing to get the output okay so this this entire process of execution and compilation compilation and execution of the C program can be thought of as a three step thing one that whenever you are writing and saving the program you are saving it with the extension dot C that is program dot C then after compilation the object code will be generated that is program dot obj and in the last step what will happen from this object code executable code will be generated and which when run you will have the desired output but if you want to go through detail if you want to check it minutely step by step so first the from program.c then the program.i your extension extendable source code or intermediate source code will be generated after preprocessor text preprocessing uh, happen then after compilation what will happen the assembly language code will it will be generated that is program.asm and after that assembler will convert this to object code so obg program.obg will be generated and after linker and loader takes, takes its action then .exe file that is the executable file will be generated so program.1.c program.c then program.i then program.asm then program.obj and finally we will receive the program.exe which will run successfully we will get our desired output so this is the entire process of the compilation and execution of a C program okay so students I, I hope that you have understood it very clearly even after if you have any kind of doubt you must feel free to add your commands your valuable inputs in the command box so that I can give the answer on that and explain it okay so uh, uh, thanks for watching okay so please take care have a nice day thank you